Hey guys, my name is Mike. I am a local realtor here and I made this channel and I've been doing these videos to help the public make better decisions when it comes to buying and selling a home. And today I am going to go over the quarterly market review for Stoneham and show you what is happening in the market. And then I'm going to show you what is currently happening in the beginning of Q2, what is under agreement, what is active, and kind of predict what might happen for the next quarter. So let's share my screen and just get right into the video. So specifically single family homes is what we're going to go over because there's not enough or there's not a lot of condo sales in Stoneham. So a lot of people have single family homes and that's what a lot of people are interested in. So that's what we're going to go over. I'm going to do line by line. Closed units, we're down by one. Days on market, down by one. And uh, days to offers, down by three. Now, one thing to remember, and I should have opened with this, but we're using median because this is where the bulk of the sales happen. Average pulls the lowest lows and highest highs. I want to know where the bulk of the sales are so I could get a clear picture of what is happening in the market. You could have some dinosaurs that have been sitting on the market for, you know, let's say six months, eight months, and they're just overpriced and skews the data. I want to know what the median is. It's better in this for this specific topic. Okay. So days to offer is nine. What this normally means is a house goes live Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, open house Saturday, Sunday, offer deadline Tuesday, Wednesday of the following week. Sometimes agents are a little lazy and forget to market under agreement or pending or have their assistant do it. For the most part, you have 48 to 72 hours from the time you see a home to make an offer, okay? Median sale price, this is where it gets interesting, okay? I wanna show you first, median sale price and then median list price. Median sale price for 2020 was 535. Median list price was 549, right? Median sale price in 2021 is 567. The median list price is 544. Now look at the differences here. You have you have a lower list price and a higher in, you have a higher sale price. In 2020 you had a lower list price, right? You had a, but an even lower sale price. Okay, so there was a difference of thirty two thousand dollars between or thirty two five between 2020 and 2021 for the sale price, right? But there's also a difference of five thousand dollars and negative five thousand for the list. Somebody, I did this video yesterday, and somebody asked me why, why could, how could that be if the market is appreciating? Well, a lot of times sellers become more savvy, and they realize that if they market and put it on at, a, at an aggressive price, they're getting better offers on the property. They're getting more eyes on the property. Okay, so I think that is why. Okay, median list price, right? To median sale price. Median list price, you're at 322. Median sale price, you're at 346. So you could tell there's a huge difference between uh, the median list and median sale. What this means is most properties are selling over the list price. Now that's a complete opposite in the beginning of 2020. You had 287 to 282. Okay. Now the next thing I want to show you is the median sale price as a percent of the list price. So what this means is how far over or under. A property is selling, right? In 2020, you had 98.57, you had 103.58, so you have a 5% difference. If you sold your house in 2021, you would have made 5% more if you listed in the first quarter of 2020. That's what that means. I'm sorry to tell you that. Now, this is a really important one too. Median sale price as a percent of assessed price. This is something that I use sometimes when I go on a listing appointment because the asset, you could calculate the asset, the assessed value is one thing, right? But if we have a number, let's just say 20%, if most places are selling 20% over the assessed value, it's a pretty good metric to figure out what something may sell or may be listed at, okay? It's not a definitive thing. Sometimes the assessments are off. Sometimes people don't record or pull permits for additions and stuff like that, and it skews the assessed data. But this is a really good metric as well, okay? No short sales, no lender owned. So that means no foreclosures, okay? Uh, listed units are down. Uh, units price change. This is an important one. There's been t only 21 price changes. That means that most places are selling, right? For at or around or above the list price because there's not a price change. When, units that went pending, there's a little bit less in 2021. And units sold, we have 159 versus... Uh, this is the 12-month activity too. I want to just be clear, okay? Units sold is 159 in comparison to 182. So... Something to consider um, is this is pulling 12 months back, including uh, Q1 of 2021, okay? So don't think, we don't, we don't have 12 months finished in 2021. Just want to be clear on that, okay? Now the next thing. 
let's just show this. This is our MLS, okay? What I want to show you is new and active, right? So we have th from three months back, okay? We have six properties, okay? Some of these, like this one here on Country Club Road, right? You already know by what I showed you. This was listed in 2020, and back in 2020, 408, that, or 408 bucks a square was high in 2020. It's high in 2021. High probability this place is overpriced, right? You know that based on the data that I just showed you, okay? Um, same thing here. This one's 380. Normally, when you have a lot of square footage, this one has 3,100 square, your price goes down. Your price per square foot goes down. It's just the way the market works. The, the, the more square footage you have, the less the price becomes, unless it's new construction or something. I'm just talking about resales. Um, now we have a few more. We have these down in here. These three, including this one, may already be under contract, and they just did market under contract, especially this one. Um, I'm willing to bet if I call the listing agent, there's a high probability that it is under contract. The reason why I think that, unless there's something wrong and they can't have showings, is because the price per square foot, the list price per square foot, is actually a pretty good price point, okay? So I think there's a high probability that they may have forgotten to put this under agreement. These are probably going to sell too uh, because, again, they're at a good price per square foot. Educated buyers and educated uh, realtors are going to tell their clients that, okay? Now, unless the house is just not in the area they want or is a complete mess or whatever, you know, we're not going through the listing photos here. All right, the next thing I'm going to show you, which is also important, is contingent and under agreement. Where's under agreement? Contingent. There, it's right below. Can't see. So first, let me tell you what this means. Contingent means they're almost very identical things. Under agreement could mean that they're on to PNS. They're they're past PNS, right? Both the buyer and seller are bound to a purchase and sale. Contingent can mean that they are an offer was accepted, but it's not yet under agreement in the terms where it's at purchase and sale. Some agents get those mixed up. I'm not going to lie. But uh, contingent means there's an inspection contingency, uh, there's a mortgage contingency. Technically, it's contingent no matter what, right? Because you still have a mortgage contingency up until usually the week before closing. But we want to pull both and see what is happening, okay? And what I want to do first is go to days on market, and I want to see, here's a good example of what I was talking about too. <clears throat> Excuse me, talking about too. 4,000 square foot, you have 231 a square. That's a perfect example of what I was talking about when it comes to less, um, cheaper price per square foot on larger properties, right? But what I want to know is down here, I want to see, these are all under agreement and uh, under agreement, pending, contingent, different websites say different things. But look, I mean, this is all the listings within the first two weeks, right? So basically all here, you have all of these homes that are going under contract in a short amount of time. And the price per square foot, some of them are higher. This might be something that's totally renovated or in a great spot. Um, price per square foot is going up, as you can see. Look at these, 428 a square, 438 a square, 499 a square. Uh, so the price per square foot is going up, and they're selling in a short amount of time. So what happens is it's going to pump the price up even more when these close in Q2, right? So the data that we have available when you list your house now, if you list your house today, a lot of these that have a high price per square foot, as long as they are comparable, are going to be great comps for your house come Q2. I don't see this slowing down because there's six listings on the market right now in Stoneham. I mean, it's I just can't imagine this slowing down. So anyway, if I go up a little further, you're going to have some that, you know, maybe let's say these 18, 19, 20s, 21s. Let's just say that the agent was you know, maybe a little bit of lax or whatever. They didn't mark them under agreement. You could always go into these listings too and see the day on if they got an offer. But then you have, this is why I don't like using averages. You have one here that's been on the market for over six months. If I use this and, and I pulled this when I'm doing my, um, the reason it's been on for so long too uh, is, you know, was not a bad price. It's just that 4,000 square foot homes don't sell that often in this area. So Using this skews all of the days on market data. I hope that makes sense. But for the most part, I, I think that what is going to happen, let's just see sold over the last three months. And again, we have those 24 units. And if you look all the way at the bottom, I'll show you. The median list price is 550. Now this is the last six months. Median sale price is 585. I mean, if you're listing a house 
If you're, I want to tell you something right now. If your house is worth 560 or 570, you really need to list it at 550. The reason that we do that is because people will start and stop their search criteria. This is just a, a tip. Start and stop search criteria in certain brackets, right? If you're at 551, right, and somebody stops at 550, they're not going to see your house. That's why educated, smart sellers that are working with agents are selling houses for over the list price. List price is not market value. Market value is what a buyer is willing to pay, seller is willing to sell, and what ultimately it appraises for, okay? So most properties are selling over uh, over the list price, okay? Median list is 319, median sale is 344, and then your median days to offer is about 85. But remember, the median days to offer could be skewed a little bit because agents sometimes forget to market under agreement, contingent, whatever. But that's it. I'm going to do a few more of these in all the markets that we sell in. We sell in quite a few. If you have any questions at all, please reach out to me. If you're wondering what your home may be worth, what you should do, it's a really tough time for a lot of people. I could give you advice on that. The hard part is buying and not selling, but there are options for a lot of people out there. And if you're a buyer and you're getting out big continuously, you really need to buckle down and figure out what is going on and figure out a game plan of why you're getting outbid because not every single buyer out there is a cash buyer, okay? They're not cash buyers and homes are selling every single day. So why are you getting outbid, right? You need to figure that out. Okay, again, my name is Mike Urban. Hope you enjoyed this and there will be more to come.